uh, welcome to this uh, short film on uh, outsourcing and uh, risk management. Uh, this uh, short film is, uh, as all the other films, uh, based on uh, the book uh, by Ian Van Wielen, uh, the 5th uh, edition uh, on the purchasing and supply chain management. First, uh, just a short definition. Um, Characteristics uh, of outsourcing, as you can see here, uh, in-house performance activities are transferred to a third party, so it goes over to a, another legal uh, identity. Uh, assets, knowledge, and sometimes employees are sent to that uh, external party. Uh, quite often we see that that is an extended and long-term relationship. Um, because you're kind of moving uh, that activity over, um, so uh, it has a tendency that you, you are forming a rather long-term contracts. Uh, buyers from uh, both uh, parties experience new cost and uh, risk profiles, and we also experience that uh, the uh, competences and capabilities uh, inside the, uh, the company that is outsourcing activity is actually changing because it will go from you doing the activity to you managing it, uh, the activity. Outsourcing was previously uh, focusing in around uh, uh, cost reductions, really. We were moving activity over to another party. Uh, we looked at our core capabilities, moved that over, and we were very cost oriented. So it was much about, okay, how can we get the uh, cost per unit down? Uh, currently, uh, it is much more around that we will uh, gain uh, business uh, capabilities and, and flexibilities. Um, and also, we also see that it is a way of gaining access to uh, new markets. So a much different uh, viewpoint on outsourcing nowadays than we had in, in the old days. But still, cost is also today playing a role in our decisions around uh, whether we should outsource or not. The rationale uh, for outsourcing, strategic reasons for outsourcing, you see here, uh, what we are seeing in the literature is that uh, improving uh, company focus, uh, you have your now your core uh, focus on your core capabilities and then the rest you are uh, outsourcing, gain access to world-class capabilities. We see that in, uh, in Asia, the capabilities of uh, the partners that we outsource to is uh, increasing. Uh, get access to resources, uh, absolutely. Uh, the increased flexibility that I uh, talked about, uh, and in the day, all of this should, of course, naturally bring forward an improvement on uh, customer satisfaction. Uh, at a tactical level, um, as it says here, reduce uh, the cost, uh, free up internal resources. So as I'm moving out activities, then I'm freeing up uh, resources uh, and that I can allocate to other areas uh, that might add more value to uh, my overall uh, supply chain. Uh, and it says here improved performance. But uh, as you can see uh, at the bottom, all these uh, underlying reasons has one overall objective, and that is to improve the overall uh, business. Not only for the outsourced firm, I would say, and uh, I would like to add that it is for the overall performance of the supply chain. So again, as I said in the last film, we are not competing companies versus companies. We are certainly competing now with supply chains against supply chains. So uh, outsourcing is maybe one uh, way of uh, further improving our supply chain uh, capabilities. There are advantages and disadvantages of uh, outsourcing. And here you can see there is a strong list here. Uh, advantages, as we have talked about, free up capital. Um, you may ask the, the supplier here to, uh, to invest uh, in certain activities and maybe certain machines that, that you then don't need to allocate your uh, cash to. Um, on the other hand, as you see, uh, disadvantages uh, increase the dependency of the supplier. I mean, as they buy in machines that is operating uh, for you, then uh, of course you're becoming more and more dependent on, on that supplier. Uh, Optimal use of knowledge, uh, you can outsource activities that uh, to a supplier that is very specialized within that field and thereby you can gain the latest and greatest knowledge. Um, uh, on the disadvantages here, you can see the continued following up and you cannot uh, underestimate uh, that bullet point I have to uh, underline here. Uh, so the, 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 the notion of taking a 
a problem issue in your company and just move it over to a supplier and uh, cross your fingers and hope that he can solve it for you uh, and by uh, and then at the same time uh, maybe get rid of the uh, the capabilities inside your own company to be able to execute that uh, activity without having a proper a follow-up structure in place and so forth is a really, really bumpy road or could at least be a very bumpy road. You have to continue making sure that uh, you can, uh, that you don't shuffle over you, the issues that you have inside your own company. You can, of course, collaborate with the supplier to fix the issue that you are facing in, in your company, but you must have the needed uh, follow-up capabilities inside your organization to monitor that uh, the outsourced partner is performing and the, the SLA is being, uh, being worked uh, towards. So there's a long list here. Uh, success uh, of uh, outsourcing are, are uh, kind of, uh, there are good stories, there are not so good stories. Uh, I think it has much to do with uh, uh, what is it that you are outsourcing, uh, how much effort have you put into actually the full outsourcing process, uh, i.e. finding the right supplier for you. And here we're going to talk a little bit about uh, the strategic fit. Did you find a supplier that was fitting you and, and he was fitting uh, you? Uh, so uh, uh, much around that, then we will have a look at uh, some modules that uh, you can uh, use uh, in navigating through the outsourcing process. Uh, and here, here's one model. Uh, and here you can see on the x-axis the strategic importance, uh, high-low. Uh, so... Uh, if you have a, a low strategic uh, importance of the uh, compasses, then uh, yeah, you um, it, it seems like a, a okay area if you are down in the lower uh, left-hand quadrant here to outsource. Uh, on the other hand, if it, it is high and 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 uh, you are up in the in the up right-hand corner, then uh, it's a key uh, area for you, uh, and you uh, should uh, consider uh, keeping it in-house. So, so, so this model is saying that yeah, uh, there are some conditions and characteristics that you should have a look at and analyze before deciding what should uh, be a candidate for being outsourced or what should be a candidate for being uh, in-house. The process. The uh, three-stage process that they're indicating here, uh, strategic phase, uh, why should you outsource, or why not should you outsource, what should you outsource, and who should you outsource it to. Uh, the uh, transition phase, uh, how are we going to move over that activity, uh, and then the operational phase on uh, how do we, once we execute on it, how do we then control it. And uh, it sits down, uh, in, as you can see here in figure uh, 8.4, the outsourcing process, the strategic transition and operational phases uh, and as you see in the operational phases managing the relationship really important uh, so um, just like we saw in the last film that I uploaded um, and and here is the uh, four uh, phase model that uh, Van Wieling is suggesting uh, for strategic outsourcing phase one identification of uh, so where are we a market research a preliminary assessment a potential uh, shortlist of suppliers for that is capable of uh, doing the activity that you would like to outsource market benchmark and it filters straight down into phase two where you are then doing a more detailed audit uh, the last time uh, or in the last video i talked about uh, that if you are outsourcing a warehousing operation, uh, go on site and do a uh, audit uh, whereby you assess how are they actually performing, the supplier, how is he performing warehousing operations, for example. Uh, and then you are signing up the, the, uh, the NDA and uh, then you are maybe doing a further uh, narrowing down on the shortlist based on the on-site audits. Uh, phase three, uh, contract negotiations. And in this phase, you would like to have more than one supplier because uh, my experience is that contracts could get a little bit locked down. So uh, you should have the option to have uh, at least uh, two, maybe three in the contract negotiation. But here, be, be very open with the, uh, the shortlist. Uh, let them know that they are not the only ones so they can uh, consider whether they want to move into uh, these uh, uh, contract negotiation with you um, and then once you have a contract in place uh, then you start to have the ordering coming in 
uh, executing, you have the key off meeting. Um, so in that in that phase, uh, make sure that you really uh, give all the information that the uh, supplier is needing for coming up with their best possible solution to how to operate that activity and also come with the best possible pricing because you want to have the the honest pricing uh, based on uh, as uh, the best possible conditions so so you have to supply the needed information uh, in the sake of describing what it is giving some operating data if that is what is needed so it is your responsibility uh, to really move that forward to a possible su supplier so he can quote the best uh, possible once you're in operation as you can see here uh, continuous improvement absolutely have to work with the supplier even though that you have outsourced uh, that activity to a supplier still uh, work with the supplier to keep on improving the business phase four uh, post-contract review contingent improvement supplier validations and so forth a scorecard all of that stuff is of course uh, needed uh, and have the focus uh, on the customer as you can see it so uh, a uh, a very solid model, uh, very uh, time consuming, but uh, if you are going down the road of outsourcing, uh, you have to really put in the effort to, uh, to make it work. And risk, yes, there are certainly risk associated with moving a internal activity done to, a, uh, to another uh, company. And they are listing here uh, four areas, uh, technical risk, commercial, contract, and performance risk. So there are risks in every aspect of this relationship. Uh, for example, contract does the contract, uh, is that insufficient detail describing the performance that you are asking for? And if you have a performance risk, uh, how do you uh, handle and deal with that? So there are plenty of areas that you need to, uh, to be f focusing on that there are risks associated with it. So here is a list of critical success factors that has been outlined uh, for outsourcing and uh, just to take them understand the company goals objectives you should talk to your supplier on what is it that you are trying to accomplish with this uh, outsourcing uh, this to better they understand where you are heading uh, this to better they can actually supply a value to uh, to the full supply chain give them a view of the strategic vision and plan uh, what is it that your customers is looking for and thereby how are you designing your supply chain to facilitate that corporate goal uh, so uh, so that supplier better understand where are you coming from? As I said here, select the right supplier, take the needed effort in the uh, RFP process to make sure uh, that you are executing all the needed steps to find the so-called right supplier. And here, strategic fit is certainly a, uh, a important uh, area. Um, a proper uh, structured contract, open communication uh, with individuals, so communication is really important. Uh, ongoing management of the relationship, we have talked about that. Uh, there are, then down to maybe the, the second last here, strategic fit. Uh, do you fit me and uh, do I fit you? Really important, we, we saw that in the last uh, lecture where, I, uh, where we went through an article where it had the strategic fit as uh, one of the parameters uh, and then the performance out on the x-axis. And there you can really see which one should you be uh, working further with and are there some that you should actually consider terminating. So strategic fit is really important. Um, and then uh, last but not least, have a backup plan. Uh, so if this uh, outsourcing should fail, then do have a consistency plan on how are you going to deal with that so you can still uh, make product available for your customers. So really long and comprehensive list uh, makes really a lot of sense uh, when you're outsourcing. Um, so finalizing uh, this uh, short film on, uh, on outsourcing, it has become very popular because we are focusing in on our core business, outsourcing, and then lately we are looking at saying, can I gain uh, strong capabilities from uh, outside partners? Uh, can I improve my flexibility uh, by having more partners in here? Um, but you have to also careful execute it through a solid process that you have seen here, and you have to careful select uh, the activities that you are considering uh, outsourcing. Um, the, uh, the second from the bottom here, outsourcing strategy should be in line with the corporate strategy naturally, I would say. 
uh, and then last but not least, uh, make sure to allocate the appropriate amount of resources to manage the outsourced agreement and have a backup plan in place if it should uh, fail. Thank you very much for listening and uh, I will see you next time.